path is covered by rugged, intimidating landscapes. Jagged peaks, arid lake beds, winding canyons, endless adventure. When you push yourself out of your comfort zone, do difficult things, and build skills that will last a lifetime, you'll never be lost again. The Rebel Rally is a triathlon of rally. It consists of a couple of different formats, compass and map challenges and enduro challenges, either being on route or on time. Competitors are in stock manufacturer vehicles in one of two classes, 4x4 or X-Cross. There's no technology, meaning no cell phones, no GPS, no personal support crews, it's just a driver, a navigator, and the third teammate, which is your vehicle. With maps that we provide, a compass, a plotter, and a scale, and probably a stopwatch and some magnifying glasses, and an accurate odometer. That's it. Well, I mean, the Rebel Rally is type two fun, right? Like, you hate it while you're doing it, and then afterwards you're like, that was really fun. Every day is relentless. I think it's a habit loop. You do an activity that's challenging, you get a reward, you do it again, then you get another reward, you do it again, you get another reward. For people that love a challenge and they get really rewarded by executing that challenge, the Rebel Rally is the perfect platform. I mean, it's because it's something that you shouldn't be able to do. Like, you shouldn't be able to go out and find 25 points on this earth without a GPS. It shouldn't be possible. And yet, you make it possible because you know how to do it and you learn how to do it and you focus and you persevere to get out there crossing whatever kind of terrain that you were dumb enough to try to cross instead of going around. Ask me how I know. Navigation across open desert, it's a little bit adrenaline building because you, the opportunity to get lost is so present. When you watch it, we're driving pretty slow. I mean, all things considered. Um, we stop a lot. We just stop. It looks like for no reason, but really in the car, we're solving a giant problem. Taking that 2D map and turning it into a 3D representation of what's around you, that's the hard part. If you don't like conflict, it's gonna be a tough deal because you have to meet the problem head on. You have to be direct. You have to be straight up, honest, clear, but you have to do it together. The game in the Rebel has been elevated to such a high level. Even our rookies are getting better and better and better every year because of the amount of training that's available ahead of time and because the amount of help that past competitors are giving to the rookies. Everybody has this incredible understanding of the skill level, what you need to do, how you need to do it in order to win. And so the margin of error is this big. The top level competitors are truly students of the game we created. It's crazy how good they are. I think um, when I first met Emily, it was pretty apparent right away that she was the kind of person who could accomplish amazing things. Just a spark plug, just spitfire, just soft-spoken, sweet, but there's a, there's, a, there's a driven monster in there that wants to get something done. She wants everyone to work up to their full potential and she'll do anything to help you do that, but she knows when to back off and when to be like, okay, I'm gonna help you up to this much, but then it's up to you to take it the rest of the way. And like, that's what's really cool because she makes sure that she like, she's not gonna do the work for you, 
but she'll help you get there. She's a mentor. She's willing to provide a platform for women to shine. And so I was very intimidated to meet her because she's larger than life and she's this world-class competitor. And I met her and she's the nicest, easiest to talk to woman I've probably ever met. So my, my nerves were unfounded. She's a very balanced person, very successful yet very down to earth and approachable. She's a very complicated woman. I've had the honor of interviewing her for a, a fairly in-depth story and got to learn some things about her that I never knew, that you couldn't know unless you asked some, some fairly probing questions. She has been through so much, both physical trauma and emotional trauma, but I think where a lot of people would respond to those things in, in a way that would diminish them, she's remarkable because she has responded to so many things in a way that really shows tremendous amount of mental toughness, physical toughness. So she's this tiny little package, but there's just a powerhouse of a human being inside of her. I came from a family and a father who loved cars, but I didn't start driving really driving and driving off-road until I met Rod Hall. And that was um, a little over 20 years ago. I never made a plan to race. I was into skiing and cycling, you know, and, and then later snowboarding and, and line-picking sports. But I never made a decision to drive. Rod made that decision for me. He pulled me aside one day as we were driving down the street and said, hey, I found my new driver. And I said, great, you know, who's that? And he said, you. And it took me a second because at the time, you know, I own a sports marketing company and I'm at a lot of big events and I just figured he wanted me to drive the cars from GM and guerrilla market them and plant them where I was going. And I didn't really interpret the fact that he wanted me to race for him. And once I got over that shock, he said, you know, I can teach you how to drive. It's easier for me to teach someone who has the right mindset, who will never give up, who loves to be coached, and doesn't have any bad habits yet. It's easier for me to train them how to drive and how to race, but you will have to learn how to win. So that's how I got into it. In my life, I've had a number of windows open and I wasn't afraid to jump through the window. I wasn't aware of all the events that she'd put on. She understood how to promote and put on and organize events. She knew how to see things on a much bigger scale. And originally she told me she'd done the Gazelle Rally and I knew she, just because of who she knew, I, I'm like, I knew that she had done some off-road racing for sure. But then we started talking about Rod Hall, who I'd met in Africa on the Dakar Rally and how much of a mentor um, he was to her. And then we started talking about, you know, driving stock vehicles because she was kind of amazed that I wasn't smashing my wheels off of my truck and stuff like that. And she would say, you know, Rod would like the way you drove this thing, that, that we're not tearing the tires off of it. So I didn't know much, but it's just something that she has in her back pocket that if you if you were to say, you know, people do this with me all the time, it's like, well, what do you, what do you know about racing cars, driving cars or racing motorcycles? Because I'm just an old guy now, right? Some kid will like, what do, you, what do you know about that? And then you can just pull it out of your back pocket. And, well, I did this and I don't challenge her like that. I know, I know she can pull something out of her back pocket that, <laughs> that in the car racing world that is uh, way beyond what I'd ever be able to do. The takeaways for me in, in racing have been great friendships, character building in the hard times, when you have the naysayers, you know, is usually the only woman out there. You have the people that don't believe in you, you have the critics, and you just keep focused, you know, on what the goal is.
early on, I knew this was an underserved space for women. I've been accused of being sexist because I'm doing, you know, a women's event and, and that's not fair to not include men. And yes, racing is open for women, but there are very few women who are doing it. Now people say, oh, there are a lot of women racing now. True, there's more, but maybe 2% or less in a field. I wanted to start an event that would give women the feet, just the feel. What I saw in training programs is that when women would come to training, they would tend to stay in the back, listen really well, not put themselves out there too much, felt a bit under the microscope, and then the second day in exercises, they would just come to life. And, you know, I thought, well, it's too bad they, you know, they didn't feel more comfortable the first day, you know? I wanted a world-class event that is designed for the strengths and weaknesses that we have to make the, the strengths shine, but the weaknesses show themselves so you can clearly work on them <laughs> and be pushed on your weaknesses to refine them. I wanted a badge of honor event for women, not watered down as a driver. I wanted a fun, challenging format, like kick in the pants, fun to drive, really hard to navigate, and really hard to do well as a team, and that you'd have to really work at it. I didn't want an event that seemed soft or would be discredited as a little women's event. And I wanted to create an incredible team of people. One of the amazing things that now I've really watched is she knows how to grab the right people. You know, I don't know how she found me, but finds people that really know their their space, their zone, what they're good at. Emily is really good at getting people who um, are the best person for that job, you know? She's so good at it. My name is Chrissy Beavis. I'm the competition director of the Rebel Rally. I'm the head of scoring and I'm the head judge. I met Chrissy Beavis because a friend of mine owned a winter driving school in Steamboat Springs. And he said, you need to meet Chrissy Beavis. Like you two would be the dynamic duo. You know, you just have to meet her. And so I did, I called her up. It was like an hour long phone call about all of the things I'd done. I wanted to know all the things she'd done. And it was interesting because our resumes didn't line up in any way. We didn't have anything that aligned. It's just everything meshed well. Everything seemed to like work like it would support each other. And they were all so similar that we kind of knew like we could work great together. We became friends and you know, really got to know her and her history. And we always say that the Jabot family, her parents, Mike and Paula Jabot, they're the first family of rally here in the United States. I love driving off-road. I learned to drive um, a Saab 900 stick shift out in the desert when I was like nine. When I was 16, I became a navigator in Pro Rally, which is like speeding down little forest roads. Then it turns out that I was pretty good at it. I was pretty good at co-driving and I got a lot of experience. I started getting paid for it, went pro when I was like 19 with Mitsubishi and um, Reese Mellon was the first person I drove, you know, co-drove for in a, in a factory sponsored car. And I was only 19 and that was really fun just to kind of be part of something bigger and bigger. Fast left five over crest 50, max crest 70, right three late. Then crest 150. So Emily first called me about doing the Rebel Rally. She was like, hey, I want to do an all-women's seven-day off-road rally in the States. I was like, you're crazy. There is no way we can get permission to do, to do that. I remember she pulled me aside one day and said, hey, I have this crazy idea. And that goes a long way with me. That's a, that's a great opening line to, to get my attention because like, I like crazy ideas. And she explained her idea for the Rebel Rally. 
She knew from my past, I had experience with rallies in general, understood navigation, and so she kind of explained it to me, and I said, that's a great idea, you'll never be able to do it. But if you do, let me know, I'd like to help. Growing up, my parents put on one of the largest pro rallies in the country, and getting land permissions anywhere in the United States can be very, very difficult. When she was so sure that she could get the permits for it, I was like, oh, well, I've got ideas on what I want it to be like. I've got goals that I want an all-women's rally in the States to meet. And I think that just, at that point, came from having 20 years of experience sitting in both seats in a male-dominated rally situation and also seeing what all other all-women's events internationally were like and some of the ways that they kind of let me down. And I was like, we could do this so much better. You know, we could really make it build women up, teach women amazing skills, and make them more successful in their daily lives. I think she takes the, like me, it's like, okay, here's the crazy idea, that now tell me I can't do it. And, and when you tell me I can't do something, that's just a little bit more motivation where like, okay, I don't want to say hold my beer and watch, you, you know, but it's, it, I get that level of motivation, like I'm going to do this. I knew that if we created the rally that we would want to compete in, that we would end up with a successful rally that met our goals. It just came down to the fact that we just had to start somewhere. We just had to start.